baby's heartbeat, one of the most pure and perfect sounds. Seeing a life form even more miraculous. Cute little lips. And on this day, this ultrasound room holds a special story of sacrifice, loss, and love. To know that somebody's only ever had bad news, really. And then for the first time to hear, everything is good. It's okay. And then you hear a heartbeat. This is reality. And she's going to get to experience what I have. To understand the experience, we want to take you back to the beginning. Eugene nurse Bonnie Root made the choice, along with her husband Brian, to be a surrogate for Debbie Winholm, who, get this, is also a pediatric ICU nurse in California. I think it's a huge gift. I think if you're, I think you're talking about a whole caliber of person when people look into something like donating an organ or giving somebody a baby. These women may work in similar fields, but their road to having a family couldn't be more different. Bonnie was able to get pregnant fast. Wonderful pregnancies, wonderful deliveries. It was easy. Bonnie and her husband, Brian, are blessed with two boys. Debbie and her husband, Brennan, have been married for 11 years, and they've been trying to have a baby for seven of those. They suffered two miscarriages and three failed attempts at in vitro fertilization. It's really been a long, long road. Your heart just gets as full as humanly possible and you get, you, the imagination has a life of its own and you, you fly with it and you think this is it and we're having our family and, and we're off to the races and then all of a sudden you slam into a brick wall. Finally though, Debbie was able to climb that wall with Bonnie. The two were matched here at the Northwest Surrogacy Center in Portland. Couples from all over the country, even the world, are looking to expand their families. On average, the matchmaking process takes about six months. We do criminal history checks, we do civil history checks. Um, uh, the interviews themselves go on for, for several hours as we get to know them. Director of the Northwest Surrogacy Center, John Challey, says this can be an exhaustive process and only about 5% of women who contact them end up meeting all of the criteria and making the match. All of this process, including the contract process, the focus is on establishing a relationship that's going to take people through a very difficult process in many ways. For Bonnie and Debbie, their relationship began here over Skype. It just feels like someone that you've loved your whole life. Bonnie then started priming her body for pregnancy. And then in March, the embryo transfer day. Going to, out of Cottage Grove. Yay. Why are we leaving? Oh, you know, to make a baby. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. In April, a positive test. Who better to break the news than Bonnie's two boys, Danny and Timmy? I hope you guys will invent you. My heart melted, thinking, wow, this is, this is actually, this is actually happening. And just like that, Bonnie's belly began to grow. Undeniable baby pouch. Every step, every week, I've been reminded that I can, I really can relax and I really can be hopeful. Then came the big gender reveal, a beautiful baby boy. So what does it feel like to carry another woman's baby? I think that you have to be set up for that mentally and emotionally before you ever even go into this process. This isn't something that you get at the end. You get so much more in a different way. And many might wonder about the jealousy for both families. I think the only time that that does come up would be if people are complaining about being pregnant. And then I realize I do still have that little gnawing feeling inside, like, but you're pregnant. Having my own family and the joy of my own family and the distraction of my own kids really takes away any potential negative feelings that there would be. We wanted the whole experience to be rich and important because when um, our son comes into the world, we want that to be his story. Bonnie's husband, Brian, also a big part of this journey. He says he feared for Bonnie's safety and hopes the moment they hand him to the homes, there won't be an attachment. Surrogacy, though, isn't for everyone, in part because of the financial impact. Very little is covered by insurance. The whole process uh, can easily, easily, frequently cost um, $140,000. Emotionally, it's been hard, um, but then you add in the, the sort of the financial layer, and that just like it really just ups the just the the stress. The money comes into it, but the the drive to have a child and to to grow our family 
sort of takes over in a way that feeds me. The surrogates make money. However, Bonnie says the money was an afterthought. I'm sacrificing my body. I'm sacrificing my health. I'm risking my life, truthfully. So on that subject, there is no amount of money in this world that would make me um, think that it was worth it to do it for money. As the months passed, the two families have grown closer together and getting ever so close to that due date. This 33-week ultrasound moved Debbie to tears. It's everything we've ever wanted. It's the best. You haven't stopped smiling. I know. I can't. Debbie and Brennan also attended their first newborn class. And of course, the teacher was Bonnie. Both families hope that sharing these very personal moments will inspire other women to talk and share their journeys. And I had no idea the struggles that women went through, I feel like, in the dark. And if people had more conversations or felt, um, felt so more surrounded by people in similar circumstances, I think it would, it would really help a lot of people. In less than a month, Debbie will find her glow, and Bonnie will have delivered the most special gift anyone can give. Two families united in the love to have a family, and this little one about to experience the overwhelming joy that's waiting for him in this world. Just days before Christmas, as we gather to celebrate for so many different reasons, there are many struggling, hoping for the simple things and one of those is family. As Eugene was getting hit by a historic ice storm on December 14th, this delivery room was filled with nothing but warmth and love. The road to this moment though, filled with so many bumps. Debbie and Brendan Hom are from San Francisco. They've been married for 11 years and most of those years were spent trying to have a baby. They suffered two miscarriages and three failed attempts at in vitro fertilization. They finally turned to surrogacy, and Eugene nurse Bonnie Root. The families were matched through the Northwest Surrogacy Center in Portland and quickly connected. Our cameras followed them. <laughs> this is us. Leaving. Along their journey, the gender reveal, baby showers, and the ultrasound rooms. All the while anxiously awaiting baby home's arrival. Labor started Tuesday night, and at 2.20 a.m. December 14th, Lucas Craig Hom made his way into this world. <laughs> From that first heartbeat to this first cry, both families say they didn't know what to expect, Despite having to see Bonnie in pain, both couples say the moment was like they had pictured. It was just, it was just surreal. No, no anxiety, no nervousness, no pain. It was just natural. Here's your baby. And then getting to, to see their joy, that's what I'd been waiting for the whole time. And it happened quickly and it was glorious and healthy and controlled and smooth and just perfect. She did, she had the connection to the baby but not the deep connection like she said so mm -hmm. it just felt like we were going to deliver this baby and it was going to be this little present and mm -hmm. that was it. It didn't feel odd that it was a surrogacy. It didn't feel anything other than here's your baby on your chest and the rest of the world got real quiet. And the Roots two boys, Danny and Timmy, <laughs> he likes you. couldn't be more proud of their mom. Are you proud of mom? Because she grew the baby. Mm -hmm. You could say this surrogacy experience a little <laughs> uncommon as the Roots even let the homes stay with them over the past month. And Lucas even earned his name here on a cold December night after a reading of the Gospel of Luke. And then we read this whole story about the, the story of Christmas and with a bunch of children sitting around the room and it was just one of those moments where there were many tears. A family fulfilled. We, we joke around about our little Christmas miracle, but it is like this, this one thing that you've wanted your entire life. And a new one formed. I don't think there's any other, any other way to think of them except extended family. Lucas will have an amazing birth story to tell, coming into this world during an ice storm, but more importantly, reminding the rest of us that we are not alone but rather surrounded by magical moments and people like Bonnie willing to carry and deliver <laughs> this pure joy.